Kids First, and today I have the opportunity to speak with an amazing actor, Ruby Wood. Ruby Wood is a 15-year-old actor, singer, and dancer who starred in Charlie in the first national Broadway tour of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and has performed in regional theater in and around central New York. Today, we're talking with him about his title role in the highly anticipated Disney Plus musical comedy adaptation of the acclaimed novel, Better Nate Than Ever. Hi, how are you? I'm really good. How are you? I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, it's great to be here. So Nate is a very funny, nice, and slightly awkward kid. Uh, in what ways can you relate to him? Um, that's a really good question. Um, so I, I am a theater kid who grew up in a small town, just like Nate. And, um, I, I, I was really lucky to be able to, um, like jump right in and follow my dreams at, at a very young age. And I feel like, um, and I love a good adventure and I, I just love being able to, uh, follow Nate on this journey of self-discovery. Yeah, I can relate to him in that way, too. I am kind of a theater kid, too, so I can relate to him in that way. And it's, I feel like it's a very beautifully done movie. It was very enjoyable to watch. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, of course. So this project, it really does sound like it's a blast. Like you, yes. ha like it sounds like it was so much fun to film. So what originally drew you to this role and how did you prepare for it? Um, well, so I, 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 I got an email from my agent and she was like, Hey, they, they want you to audition for this. And I, I looked over the sides and, um, I was supposed to, I was supposed to do a scene and a song. And, um, I like the minute I finished recording the audition, I was like, this, this, this is really good. I, I, I felt really good about it. And, um, I was, I was just like, really, I did, I did a lot of callbacks. There was a lot, I did like a whole month and, um, and by the end, I was like, oh my goodness, when are they, when are they going to tell me? They, there can't be a lot of people left. Um, and when they told me, I was just, I was over the moon. I was just so excited. Well, yeah, for sure. And I feel like callbacks, especially for something as big as Disney, would take a long time. And I would feel like, so like, oh, are they going to pick me? What's going to happen? Especially exactly. Like the anticipation, it's just crazy. <laughs> Truly. And so there are a lot of really fun and elaborate scenes, especially when you're singing like about Broadway and everything. I feel like that was a lot of fun. So yes. what were some of the most fun scenes to film? Um, well, so there's, there's, a, there's a lot of big musical numbers and all of those were fun to film, but we got to film in the middle of Times Square, like until 3 a.m. one night. And that was probably one of the... Um, one of the most fun things to film, but we also got to film in the new Amsterdam theater and we got to film in so many amazing places. If there's one good thing about COVID it's that nobody's anywhere. So we could kind of like film wherever, wherever we wanted. It was really amazing. Yeah. I feel like definitely with COVID, I feel like that helps sometimes, yeah. especially because I feel like New York is always crowded and everything. So having that just, it's still there, but lower is mm -hmm. definitely a lot more helpful. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> So you have some very large and might I say difficult songs to sing. I'm not really a singer. So yes. anything really impresses me, especially what you did. So how did you prepare for your singing scenes? Um, it was it was really it was really wild because it was right in the middle of when my voice was changing. So oh, no. um <laughs> yeah, so so uh like it was somewhat sometimes sometimes it was really difficult, but I had an amazing team of people just to support me and like just help me work through it and it ended up being just the most fun I've ever had yeah you were really incredible in all those Thank things so I'm like wow I wish I could sing because I I'm not great <laughs> but you did really amazing so Thank you. yeah and you have some also very talented co-stars such as Lisa Kudrow yes. Aria Brooks and Joshua Bassett so what was it like working with such a talented cast oh my gosh so every like everybody who who worked on the set from actors to crew members and it it they were they were all just the best group of people you could ever you could ever work with tim tim fetterly the director he just really he just like creates such an amazing environment on set and um me and aria were were in the same hotel we were on the same floor a couple of times so we we were always hanging out and um josh and lisa are both just incredible people to work with it's, I feel like it sounds like 
so much fun, especially like with you and uh, Arya, because you know, you're supposed to be like besties in the film. Yes. And I would say that staying on the same level, same hotel, I feel like yes. that would definitely help a lot. Absolutely. And, yeah. And you mentioned uh, Tim Federley. So yeah, he's the writer of the novel and the writer of the movie and director. He's, he's a lot of, lot of things. <laughs> so he's also produced like and written such big films, which is like High School Musical, the musical, the series, Ferdinand, so many, yes. so many cool things. So yes. can you share any like specific stories about working with Mr. Federley? Um, well, he, he is just the most bubbly person. And um, we, we just, we, we got along so well. And uh, his, like his directing style is really amazing in the way that like he, he's like, even, even just like the way that he words things, it just makes so much sense. And it's, he's, he's just incredible. And um, it, it was, it was just amazing experience. And he's done so many other things. So I feel yeah. like it would be so cool like to relate to him with that because he's also a theater kid too. Yes. So I feel like that's also fun because he can relate to the story because, you know, it's kind of his book is se uh, semi-autobiographical. Yes. So it's always nice that, you know, he's there too. <laughs> right, 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 right. It, yeah, it, it definitely, it definitely helped because he could, he could really, um, one of the reasons I think he was, he was so like incredible, um, at directing like this story specifically is because it is semi autobiographical and um I I'm and and he could he could kind of be like uh he could kind of push me in the right direction as like what what he wanted uh to see and it was I I'm just really honored to be able to tell his story in this way for sure and I always feel like it's great if you have the writer of the novel also like write and yeah. direct because you don't want to like completely botch it <laughs> right right yeah and so Nate, like as we've mentioned a lot, is has a back or is in theater. So, how did your uh, background in theater help you with this role? Um, well, when I was uh, when I was six years old, I did my first uh, community theater production, um, and it was uh, a production of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And for like some incredible reason, I got the role of Charlie when I was six years old. Um, yeah. And I, I, I just absolutely loved theater from that moment on. And that's, that's kind of where my heart is. So to be able to make my film debut and be able to do like Broadway songs and have it be about that thing that I love so much was just, it was just really magical. I'm sure. And actually it's kind of funny because at our school, we're doing uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory musical Great Junior. Mm -hmm. So it's, I feel like I was like, oh, that's so cool that, you know, they're yeah. doing that. <laughs> yes. And okay. So what was it like? Cause I know this would be very hard, especially with filming like a huge movie, but what was it like juggling school and filming at the same time? It was okay. So that's a really great question too. It was, it was really, it, it was difficult at sometimes. Um, but, uh, my, my teacher, uh, her name was Amy Wolk. So I've been homeschooled my entire life to give you a little backstory. So, uh, there was a tutor and, uh, she was on zoom with me and Aria and um, whenever we had like a five minute break or a 10 minute break, when the scene was turning around, we would, we would hop on zoom and do like 10 minutes of school with her. So it was, it was really, it was really crazy, but it was, it was also a lot of fun because she was amazing. Yeah. I feel like it sounds like a very crammed day. Like it was, it yeah. definitely was. <laughs> so can you give us like a day in the life of filming uh, on set? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, depending on uh, when the call time was, it it was it was it was kind of different every day. Um, but usually we woke up uh, in the morning, we got ready, and we left for set. And um, there would be uh, a a guy that would take us to uh, the set wherever wherever we were filming because it was all on location. So we were in a different spot every day, and um, we would we would like go through the scenes that we needed to film that day. Um, me and Aria would uh, run them and we would go to the uh, hair and makeup trailer and I would get my uh, costume on and then we would head over to set and film all day. Yeah, I feel like it sounds so fun. It also seems really hectic, but fun all yeah. the while. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, it was definitely, it was definitely a little chaotic, but in the best way possible. Exactly. So Nate makes some major changes throughout this film. What do you hope that audiences, uh, especially kids in theater, will take away from watching this? I I really hope that it uh, inspires kids to um, just truly like embrace and love who they are. And um, I, I hope that people 
can see from watching this film that no matter where you are, what your situation is, there will always be at least one person who is there for you and who will love and support you. Exactly. And I feel like I loved the message from this movie. I feel like it was so it's kind of, it's really relevant too, especially for, you know, people who are acting or doing theater or singing or anything in the entertainment yeah. span of the area. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you. Be sure to watch Better Nate Than Ever when it releases on April 2nd, 2022 on Disney+. Plus. I'm Catherine reporting for Kids First. Please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next interview or those of our awesome team members. Bye! <laughs> I'm about to go out Just getting started, we about to go out